thing. We can do it. <clears throat> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. Also, if you haven't met Jonathan, this is Jonathan from Always Up Too Late. I'll put his logo right here. Uh, look right in front of his face like right there. This. Okay. Um, you know, somebody actually did give me crap because I said, what's up, when in the, in the beginning of the video. It was like, really? He said, way to be original, like everybody does that. I don't know anybody, any other buddies YouTube that does what's up at the, at the beginning. But whatever, ne ne neither here nor there, um, I digress. What we're going to do tonight is a spark plug change on the W205. So uh, Jonathan has a video on the W204. He kind of inspired this, and I said, wow, I haven't changed my spark plugs in a while. So I'm a little due for spark plugs on my car, but don't tell Mercedes uh, that I let it lapse a little bit, but we're going to do the spark plugs tonight. Uh, if you're uh, looking at the W205 spark plug, spark plug replacement and you want to see how it's done, stay tuned. Okay, so uh, guys, we are about to dig in on this project. It's going to be fairly straightforward. I'm going to provide you with all the specs you need to change your spark plugs on a W205. Um, if you own a W204, I recommend you go over to Jonathan's video. It is a completely different process. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, completely. We different. were going over uh, the way my spark plug looks and the way his is, the way his engine's set up, and the way mine is. Completely different process. So if you're looking at the W204, Look in the description below because I'm going to link Jonathan's video for that. So let's uh, bring you guys in close on the spark plugs. Let's talk about spark plug gap and exactly what spark plugs I'm using. And let's get started. All right, guys. So I bought the plugs from the dealer. These are NGK plugs. Um, if you don't believe me, there's NGK here on the side. It says NGK. Um, the part number I will show shortly. The reason why I go ahead and buy the plug from the dealer is so that they can't tell me that I'm not using the genuine parts that are uh, made specifically for this car. So I don't want them to come back and say, well, you didn't use the, the uh, Mercedes plug that we said and now your warranty is voided or something like that. So don't want to, I want to be above reproach on that. If you're looking at the NGK, you want to go to Advanced Auto or any NGK dealer. This is the part number of the plug. From the dealer, they run 1850. So this set of four cost me about $80 after tax. So just letting you know, this is the part number for NGK, part number from Mercedes, but otherwise same plug. You can read the part number here, the NGK SILZKFR8H7S. Try to say that 10 times fast. All right, so... Um, Let's go ahead and gap this plug. If you've never gapped a plug before, uh, these are specified in the manual at 0 .032, okay? If you've never used a feeler gauge before, you need something to check these. Uh, pretty good thing to just invest in a feeler gauge. Um, it has a bunch of different, uh, different size pieces of metal, little shims, and this is 0 .032. And make sure that it slides in between the uh, needle and the end of the um, the electrode here. So this one is nice and tight. I can't really slide it. What we need to do is gap it a little bit more. It is deadly close. Now you you can do this a, a, a number of ways. Um, the way I'm going to teach you is with an actual tool that's designed to do it. So you can use. Uh, we can also double check. Uh, on something like this, this little pinwheel. Uh, I think Craftsman sold these. Yep, look at that, a Craftsman. Nice. Made in the USA. That's awesome. That was, that's a throwback, okay? <laughs> so point oh, oh, 0.030, zero, you can see that that fits right in between here. Boom, oh, it's right at point three zero, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit under. Now you can take these, these tabs here and you're gonna put it in the spark plug like this and you're gonna lightly, lightly, I mean barely tweak it, okay? You tweak it out just a little bit and then check it back with your feeler gauge. Whoop. All right, check it back with your feeler gauge here and it goes right in between, okay? That might have been too much. I barely moved it, but you can see that that slides right in and out of there really easily. This so. Close. I mean, it's deadly close, but I think that I moved it too far. So 
The other way to do it is bring it back like this. So now you're going to be putting torque on it um, this way. So it brings it back towards it closer. Now, barely tweak these, don't, don't overdo it. You probably won't even be able to feel it move and it'll be back tight again, see? I made it nice and tight. All right, so that's right about where I want it. Might be a little bit less. I barely touch this. So um, just have patience with it and make sure you gap your spark plug correctly. Um, make sure it's right on the money. It's still not it's sliding still in there. Real close. Okay, it's still real close, it's still sticking. So we're gonna give it one more little tweak. Okay, I always, 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 it's hard to do this behind the, behind the camera, but I always uh, gap my spark plugs because you never know what happened with them in the box. Yeah. Okay, so. Whether it has cardboard on it or not. Yep, regardless of, of where it comes from, what it's doing, that is right on the money, it's right perfect. up underneath it. Perfect. Okay, so make sure you spark, uh, gap all your spark plugs and do it the correct way. Now, let's go through the procedure and put them in the car. Thing. All right, guys, first thing on the agenda is light our world up. So I'm going to have Jonathan plug us in here. This is under hood light from uh, ATD Tools. This is their old fluorescent model. I have done a review on this, so if you want to go look at the review, um, I'll link it in the description below. But we've got our illumination here underneath the hood. Um, we are going to start here with the spark plugs. So um, are we zoomed in right here on this one? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and take the coil pack off. So if this is your first time doing it, you need a T30 Torx to take the bolts out. <clears throat> I don't know why I had it sitting over there. T30 <laughs> Torx to take the bolts out up here. Are we, in, are we good on that camera? Yes. You positive? It doesn't look like it's in frame. Yep, you're, you're in frame. Okay, cool. So, all right, I just want to make sure that we get it on camera for everybody. So, um, we've already loosened these two out. We kind of cheated. It's like uh, that old horsepower TV. If you watch them, they take everything off and, and they go on commercial break and they've got the engine all torn down. They break everything loose. They break they... everything <laughs> loose ahead of time and de-rust everything. So, it has these two bolts. We'll go ahead and take these out. Now, you do not have to disconnect the plugs from... Uh, from the coils, you are uh, able to do this without uh, disconnecting the, the Molex plug up here. Um, literally, the boot goes down underneath the, the uh, rocker cover and down to where the plug is. So you uh, have a little tab here on the side of the uh, on the side of the coil pack here where you can get your finger in here and lift up. So you want to just pull up nice and firm yeah nice and firm yeah it, it it might take some effort um sometimes if you want to you can get a big screwdriver in down through here and get underneath it and you can pry it up out now be careful what you're prying on but we go ahead and slide that bad boy out of there boom and we pulled our coil out and we did not need to disconnect it from the wiring harness so a good time to look at your coil uh, make sure that there's no gunk in the hole, um, nothing crazy going on here. Everything is intact. Now, now we can get to our spark plug. So a little pro tip that I recommend um, with your spark plug here, these are 14 millimeters. So when you slide your plug in, if you want to zoom in on this, we'll roll it on that camera. Um, the 14 millimeter, there's no spark plug socket for a 14 millimeter. So what we're going to do is the little paper towel trick that I've come up with. So I'll show you that. All right, so take a piece of paper towel and literally tear off just a piece like this. Now what you're gonna do is you just put it over the hole and then you're gonna work the spark plug down in here like this, okay? Now you have a spark plug uh, holder in a 14 millimeter, just like that, piece of cake. So, and then you can you reuse that multiple times. Now I've made this, so now when we go ahead and put it on the spark plug down on the block, we will loosen it out and it will hold the spark plug in it. In theory, best case scenario, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and do that now. Go all the way down in through here. All right, so maybe the paper towel is 
going to fight me along the sides of that. Okay, the paper towel fought me there, so I went ahead and took it out. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and break this thing loose. Now, I always install my uh, spark plugs with NECs in them, uh, or on them, should I say, not in them. <laughs> Some people pack them full of NECs, but I literally put NECs on the threads so that I can easily take them out next time. So it has been about 60,000 miles since I took them out last time. So I've been overdue, but not that big of a deal. I always like the anesthesia on the threads because there's a good chance I'm the one that's gonna have to replace them the next time. Yeah, so buddy. Always, uh, always trying to look out for future me. Yeah, that's a true story. All right, we're close to getting that out. The threads on these are incredibly long, so have some patience and do it the right way. That should be it. All right, so now you can maybe reach your hand down in here. Um, if you can't get it, there's always a pair of long reach. Always a nice pair of long reach needle nose to grab onto that bad boy and pull it up out of the hole. Boom. Okay, these look like they've got some miles on them. Yeah. Okay, same plug, just different. And you can see how the different, uh, the dissimilar metals has started to corrode around the plug and just how it interacts with the aluminum block. So uh, definitely time to uh, replace these spark plugs for sure. These were definitely worn out. So just so you get a good glimpse here, um, boom, 14 millimeter. All right, let's put the new one in. Now it is pretty funny actually how uh, how YouTube is, it's thought to be like a really simple thing and like things are really easy to just make videos. But if you look, we have this camera situation here. We have an extension cord running all the way over. Oh, what did you get? The antices, it was up at the house. The antices? All right. For the video that we're making now? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like it had to be up at the house. Now I'm out of breath from running. So, all right, let's get back to recording here. Oh. All right, that's good stuff. All right, you got a good angle on this? I think this would be. All right, I'm a common believer that if a little is good, then a lot is better. <laughs> but you literally don't want a lot of NECs on here. Um, and I highly recommend that you don't touch it with your finger because you'll get it literally everywhere. So I just coat these threads here. You don't have to do a lot. These are gonna spread out. It's gonna spread this NECs out pretty good. So just, see, now I'm putting on too much. <laughs> so wipe it off. I assume Jonathan told you that YouTube is hard while I was gone. It's super easy. Yeah. yeah, everybody thinks, oh, YouTube's easy. You just roll roll, t roll tape and and uh, get things done and, and teach people how to do this stuff. No, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> we, we strive to bring you 100% uh, good content that is absolutely uh, the right information. I'd hate for you guys. See, I got Annie C's on my fingers and it's everywhere. It's so. going to follow you everywhere. Yep, and it's going to... So now my paper towel is not gonna work. So I need to fish out my old paper towel here. So we're gonna try the paper towel trick one more time. The space in the head is not big enough to allow the paper towel to squeeze down beside the socket. So it ha the paper towel has to be 100% inside the socket for it to work. So there's only enough room for the socket itself. and Right, the right. paper towel, if it's on the outside, it will bind us up. But see, I put the paper towel in the socket so that it holds my holds my spark plug so we can put it down in the hole. Boom. All right, now we go back down in here and fish it nice and slow. Now, remember when you're installing, installing the spark plug, you, it is easy to bang the end of that spark plug against stuff and close your gap. So remember that, always remember that you don't want to bang that against anything. Be very, very careful. And then we start threading it down in the hole. And you should be able to feel it when the anti-C starts getting fully coated. It'll start nice and firm here. All right, almost there. 
time to put my ratchet on here and get it ran down. So Jonathan already looked up our torques here. Um, I think it was 18 nanometers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get the torque wrench out and we'll torque this to 18 nanometers. Got it. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and torque these bad boys down. Nice and slow. That's it. Okay, so we're nice and tight. All right, guys, so we just uh, finished changing the first spark plug. I'm not gonna bore you and show you all the rest of the three. Um, like there's a lot to do, but they take about 10 minutes a piece uh, once you get geared up and you're doing it. So, um, you know, I'm gonna spare you all the extra BS. Um, just remember your gap 0.032, um, your torque is 18 nanometers, or I think, what did Jonathan say foot pounds is? 17 foot pounds. Okay, yeah. let's, boom. Do you, do you recommend Mercedes plugs while under warning? Yes, I definitely recommend uh, um, all of the uh, standardized OEM stuff that the dealer recommends. You cannot go wrong because the dealer sold it to you. Um, I think that's the best way to go if you are under warranty. If you're not, then literally the sky's the limit. You can run whatever you want. Um, you could run a lawnmower spark plug if you wanted to. If it fits, it ships. Um, and, you know, it, whatever. If you can get it to work, I guess you can run it. I would not recommend it, but that is that is the deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we're going to get to the rest of this. Uh, we'll roll in some bloopers because we always have fun out here in the shop. So stay tuned for some bloopers. Uh, if you don't care anymore or if you're still watching, you know, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Look for Jonathan's video in the description. Please go over and click subscribe on his channel. Um, he needs all the help you can get. He's almost at a thousand subscribers. So so I remember <laughs> when I was there and I was like begging people to subscribe. I know how it goes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot. If you're here for the Mercedes videos, awesome. If you're here because you're a longtime subscriber and you're just loyal to me, that's even more of a double thumbs up. So I appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Like that. That's Sam awesome. Just like screw it. Amazing. Dude. Love <laughs> it. Just send it, right? Just send just it. Send it. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Less paper towels than the bowl. Of course I would have one. Which one? Where was that? All the way down in here. Did it go to the... It didn't oh, clank wait. on the ground, did it? No. Nope. nope. It's in here. All the way at the bottom. Come on, baby. This is okay. always good for outtakes material. I got it. Got oh, it. goodness. Oh. Working on a Harrier for many years. <laughs> no, it is pretty funny, actually, how, uh, how YouTube is... It's thought to be, like, a really simple thing, and, like, things are really easy to just make videos. But if you look, we have this camera situation. now we can put a little bit of dielectric grease on here and we'll go ahead and slide our um, coil back on awesome dielectric grease and that i left <laughs> up the house <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll be right back